Agenda will be adding one item. It's a vote on a letter to our West Selectman um, that was uh, created just today. So there was no advanced opportunity to. Yep. And, and I'll call the. Okay. Sorry, um, I'm, I don't know where in the agenda we need to put it. We would put that in the back on the business items. Okay. With the Boyles to business item, we'll make it um, Boyles and School Committee business item, uh, business section seven, uh, Boyles to C. Perfect. That's what we'll do. Maybe we'll see the other. No, it's just for the Boyles. Okay. And I'll call the Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee to order. Um, we are in the process of doing payroll and payable warrant approval. So we'll move to the consent agenda. Um, Cliff, would you like to begin? I would like to begin, Lori. Okay. <laughs> May I have a motion from our own school committee to approve the consent agenda? So moved. I second it. Um, any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 On behalf of the Boylston School Committee, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And could I have a motion to approve the consent agenda for the Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee? Consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's the smoothest we've ever done that. <laughs> Are there any communications? Yep. Are there any petitions and audiences related to items on the agenda? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Grace, you are next. Okay, so sports, spring sports begin on Monday, March 20th for baseball, softball, track, and our co-op tennis team with Clinton. Um, the Global Citizenship Club is running a shoe drive to collect new and new shoes for people in our community. Student Council attended the state conference in Hyannis last week, and we have brought back many new ideas and has sparked a movement to revise the Constitution and improve our role in the school. The France trip will be happening over April vacation, and they are doing a raffle fundraiser for the tips for the tour director, bus driver, and local guides, and anyone interested should contact Mrs. Irene Berry. National Honor Society is accepting applications for the new members. They have also successfully completed another blood drive. Thank you to all of our donors. And lastly, the Talk to Idol competition will be held on Thursday night and we will see you there. So that was very efficient. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of stuff there. Do you know how long the shoe drive is going on? Um, I tried to get that last minute today. March 24th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you know what time the Talk of Idol is on Thursday? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. All right. You have oh, all wow. the answers. Oh, Wait, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> are, you know you're okay. I can't make a decision. <laughs> okay. Um, Suzanne? Let's see. We have, um, Berlin has a literacy night on March 16th, and we are helping the ice cream social portion of that. Um, Pirates of Penzance is coming on the 24th, and we have a group of students that are going to perform with them, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we finished our box top drive. We didn't make a huge amount of money, but we pulled in about 375. Mrs. Romer's class came in second. <laughs> She's come in second a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so I think maybe the book might be there for the classroom or something. Um, let's see, right now we're looking for some cultural shows for next year. Um, we have our cultural coordinator leaving. We have a new one in, and she's just trying to come up with some ideas. So if anyone has any group suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Um, we helped to fund um, grow lights for the aeroponics garden for Mrs. Collins. She's doing an after school program 
and they're growing food for the cafeteria and they're going to do it in the cafeteria so that the kids can see what's happening. Um, we switched our May meeting until the 11th because of the settlement. I May thought you were going to say snow for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> May the 4th be with you or whatever we're calling it for the STEM committee. Um, we're not sure because it got snowed out when we had our planning session. And we're still on track for the three STEM events that we have coming in, the two mobile ed, I think I mentioned before, are coming May uh, 8th and 9th, and we still have Fidelity coming in on June 14th to do a STEM event for us. So um, other than that, we've been helping still with the makerspace, we work some scissors and you know, small items, the small but nothing drastic. That's about it. That's great. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, we just had our dance, and this is the second year we've had it be a family dance instead of just a, uh, for the girls, so we include the boys, and it was another big hit. We had a luau theme this year, and there were about 20 to 25 people that came, you know, students and their parents, and uh, it was a big hit. Um, we also, donated some money to our makerspace. I just was reminded of that. We gave our librarian, Lorraine, who's in charge of it, we donated some funds towards that. She was very appreciative of that and gave us a tour after our last evening in, uh, last week. And speaking of the library, she's having a book fair in April, the first week of April, and we're going, she's having a camping theme, so we're going to do a make your own trail mix station and help support that for her. And that would just be donation, you know, we're not gonna try to make any money off of that, just um, helping support learning. And also in May, we're gonna help support the STEM, they, I don't know if it's gonna be May the 4th again, but I mean, I know it's on the 4th, but I don't know if that's the theme, but we're gonna help support in any way we can, whether it's refreshments or whatever the STEM committee needs, we'll, we'll be there for them. And at some point, maybe, I don't know if we'll do teacher appreciation on teacher appreciation, but at some point, we'll do something for the end of the year, like we have the last few years. Sometimes maybe it's a little busy, so we want to spread it out. And we'll also, our big thing, of course, in May is the Race for Education, which will be May 25th this year. And to help BES go one to one, we're going to be using the funds this year to donate Chromebooks and a card. Um, what I wanted to report on is our school attendance children. I do this every year at this time. I did something a little bit different this year than what I've done in the past. Usually I just go over these sheets and we go over just the numbers and so forth. But what I did this time was um, for this year, and I'll make have had it um, in Kennedy as well. Um, it is the, I put it all in a graph format and a pie format because I think it's easier than just reading numbers, but you actually are able to see the differences from one year to the other. And then I even divided it up um, by um, Berlin specifically and Boylston specifically. So just to give a little bit of comparison, I was interested to see what percentage of our children and student school attending children I just want to clarify it's about all of the children in both towns regardless of where they go to school and so I'm curious to see what percentage we had last year that attend our local schools versus this year um, and so when I looked at Berlin Boylston last year we had 77 percent that were in our local schools and this year we're at 79%. So we have a higher percentage um, attending our school uh, within the town versus last year. And then in Berlin, I was interested to see some of the changes as well from last year to this year. Um, last year we had 73% of Berlin students went to local schools, and this year it's 77%. And we had 11% that were in private school, and this year it's 9%. 
Um, the vocational school, pretty much the same as such a small amount, the same one five percent to four percent is really one student, so that's nothing um, of significance. Um, so I thought that was just interesting to look at it that way. And you also last year had two percent in Berlin that went to charter school, and this year one percent of your population. Um, and you look at Boylston, um, last year you had 79% that were in local schools, and this year it's 80% in local schools. Um, you had, uh, it's 1% larger in the private school, went from 10% to 11%. Um, however, your vocation has remained the same. Your out-of-district placements went down by 1%. Um, and your home schooling students went down by 1% as well. So uh, that's where the numbers are. So it was more about, rather than just looking at numbers, I think looking at percentages makes more sense at this time. We have a difference of population. It's just where is the core of the population attending school. So I wanted to do that. The other piece I did do, um, and I added the numbers because I think it's important to understand, Oilston last year had 668 students so this year they have 721 students. So there's a larger population of students that live in Boylston than, than last year. However, they're not necessarily the younger ages. And Diane is seeing that a little bit in, in Tahanto. I think, what did you say, Diane, last week you had three students that moved in that mm -hmm. uh, you enrolled last week from Boylston alone. So. Two from Boylston, one from Berlin. Oh, I'm sorry. Two from Boylston, one from Berlin. So, and then in Berlin, what was interesting is last year, your overall population in the town was 432 students. However, this year, you have 418 students. So you have a decrease of population of students where Boylston's been an increase. And I think just keeping it real that way, I think, was just really important given our budget presentations that we're trying to do and where we're putting our funding sources and so forth. I just thought this was a clearer picture than, than what I've done in the past. So i just send that to all of you. Um, and let's see, I think that was really all that I have. This time I have my mid cycle, but we can talk about that later. Okay. okay. I love seeing the graphs, especially when you see some of the trending. It's positive. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Go ahead. I know. I'm done. waiting. Okay. <laughs> uh, the with the with the increase in, in Boylston is actually quite substantial relative uh, to the the with, with the with the increase in the budget. Mm -hmm. We're able to educate more students with a smaller increase to the, the budget, so we're clearly being as efficient as possible. Um, but there ought to be a recognition in town that that's a huge uptick in, in the number of students we're educating. And so as we find it harder and harder to you know, hit the budget targets, we have to recognize and pass the message along that we're educating when your increase is about 50 ish students mm -hmm. that's that's almost 10 percent for us so after presenting this to you today because the selectmen typically get this chart for these they get the, i want to give them this information because i think this <coughs> sends a clear picture to them of what we're, what this means yeah. and i would certainly highlight that uh, we're you know, ending up with a, a not a small increase in our request, but certainly a lot more manageable than almost 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. It also highlights the fact that if Berlin's population is lower, there's an impact on our budget to that Absolutely. too. So those two things together. We have more students, they had less, therefore we're carrying bigger keys. Yeah. Um, so. <coughs> Helpful, thank you. Robert. So you're not in trouble. I am all nervous. He was looking for his mom there for a minute. <laughs> Very effective there. <laughs> uh, so I have two updates. The first is on the, the budgets uh, for 
Boston Elementary School in the region. Um, we shared that uh, electronically with the school committee. Um, I'll start with Boylston. Um, so we just, the budget process starts early and we have up-to-date information on, um, on our schools on, on some changes and uh, so we've uh, basically factored that into our teachers' classroom salary budget um, and um, there's a $34,000 reduction that we've been able to make in Boylston next year. Uh, that will bring our budget from $2,950,000 uh, decreasing by $34,000 to $2,916,374. So it's going from a 5.58% increase to a 4.36% increase. That's the only change we had for the Boston Elementary budget. Um, so before you go any further, if Lori and Mary, is this later in the agenda to vote on that new number? But since he's talking about it now, if you want to vote on the new budget? Could I have a motion to approve the new BBS budget figure of 2916374 Are you making that motion? No, I'm asking for a motion. Oh, no, I'll make that motion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would like to make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. So the region, um, we've identified um, some savings there as well. Again, kind of looking at updated information. In this case, um, teacher salaries were reduced in FY18 by 30000 um, and we're also able to identify savings in the FY17 budget that will enable us to um, kind of preserve school choice and use that money next year. Um, and that total, that came up, that was across multiple line items. I'm not sure whether I need to read each of them, but there's about 18 different line items. Um, is it necessary that I read through them? No. Um, but, um, yeah, the details are posted. So um, the total of those adjustments to FY17 came to 39,334. Across multiple categories, we identified some salaries that were budgeted a little higher than, than the person was hired for. Um, there's some networking costs that were going to come in a little bit less, um, and um, some legal costs that we were able to identify that we probably would need to spend this point in the year we preserve what we think we will need to spend. So those were the kind of the main contributors to it, but it came from uh, kind of a lot of different pockets. The total reduction between those two is 69,334, um, bringing the budget from 8,407,155 to 8,337,821. This is the operating budget, um, which results in a Bottom line increase of 169,509 or 2.1% uh, for the region for, from FY17 to FY18. Could I have a motion to approve the region budget of 8,337,821? So moved. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Thank you. I have one other agenda item. Yep. Um, so I wanted to just inform you that we have a new three-year contract with, with a, um, a gas, we got a competitive bid for gas um, procurement for Boylston Elementary, which is the only one that uses gas for heating. Um, through our collaboration with the French, French River Education Collaborative, um, they have a, basically a, from this broker, but it's basically an energy consultant who um, works for the collaborative and keeps an eye on prices and market opportunities. Our current contract is with Spark Energy, it ends in November of 2017. Uh, the way the uh, gas bill works is you have a Eversource bill that charges you for distribution, and then the supply, the actual supply of gas, you, you pay a rate for a supplier, and that's where you can competitive bid. We can't really competitive bid the so our rate is actually going to go from six dollars and fifty-three cents per decatherm to five dollars and fifty-one percent, five dollars and fifty-one cents per decatherm. So it's a, it's a fairly nice savings. It won't be on the total bill; it'll be on the portion that's for supply. Um, and um, so I 
wanted to do two things. One, just to inform you that, and I, and I think um, also related to this request um, that the school committee vote to formally delegate authority for me to do uh, and engage in, in these types of things. These opportunities come up, I think, we typically need to, um, when they're in collaborative, when they're collaborative oil bid, the decisions made in day. So I think that from a kind of a technical standpoint, we should delegate the approval. So. Um, a little bit better from a uh, process perspective. Yeah, uh, Bob, Bob did do this, and I told him, yeah, it was a great deal and so forth, but I said, you know, technically, when it's finances, it, and, and you're dealing with a financial issue, like the school committee really should vote to give you the authority. It's just technically, I don't know if, it's been hap if that's happened in the past, but just to be clear, it really should, school committee really should be giving rather than them just doing it and then just informing you. You should be, and he still has to inform you, or she, or whomever's in, in Bob's role, which is Bob, and I see him that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's not allowed to leave. He's not allowed to leave. <laughs> but I just think it's best if you actually officially just give him the authorization to, on, on the best interest of the district, to be able to agree to it, because otherwise, if we have to bring it back to you, then the timing's not right, and we miss the opportunity. Is the authority that we're delegating just for energy rates, or is it for, are there other contracts? Or is it like some of that's implied by the role. Like, I don't know where the line is, to be honest. I mean, if it's, a, it's something we ought to bid for that's like a, a large contract, I think we want to review the bids and share what they are. Yeah. Um, there's, um, some things that are going to be small dollars where I don't think it's an efficient use of everybody's time for me to have a $300 quote is something that we look at. I would say it's more it's more or less the collaborative type bids that you're doing. It's not when we're doing our own bid. Clearly, you bring it back right. to the school committee because that's our timeline. But when it's a collaborative bid, it's their timeline that we're jumping into. Um, just a thought on that. Uh, it starts to get a little bit gray as to what warrants it and what does not. But I would argue that, that the, the whole thing is, is under that operations role. And, and we've never been asked, at least in the, in the last nine years, we've never been asked to, to formally appoint that. It's kind of implied in, in, the, in the operations role. Um, I guess we can. Well, how does everybody else feel about that? To me, it's just always been, I don't know. Well, I understand it's the role, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I'm wondering what some boards do, and I don't know about school committees, but other kinds of boards. There's sort of a dollar limit to the authority that staff have, and in excess of that dollar limit, it has to go to the board. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be a fairly substantial dollar limit that we can do. But there's never been that. It's also hard to say because with that with that number, it may not be overly meaningful for one application, but in something else it could be, and we, and we want to be aware. So, it, like I said, I think it's a little gray. What are you saying? It was a little gray. So when we do bids, individual bids, and they open, we always bring it to the school committee to approve our recommendation of that bid before we actually give somebody um, the letter of approval. So that's what we always do for our own bids. And so that's typically what you do for bids. But what I'm saying is on the collaborative, they have to make the decision that day. They can't say, wait, I have to go to school committee. So it's just if you authorize, even if it's just through the collaborative bids of energy, mm -hmm. I think energy and, and mostly energy, but I think they, they also, so they, we get better pricing because we aggregate as a group. Right. And so if we we're able to go there and we, so for the oil bid that was at, we had I don't know, 10 people from 10 districts there and we made a decision on the, um, we opened all the bids. We were looking at the lowest supplier and the second lowest, and had some concerns about um, the, the lowest price one that they were able to address. And so we, but we decided right there that that was the decision had to be made then on, on who it was. It, it seemed like, oh, okay, do I have the authority here or not? I mean, the expectation is I'm going to go back and request approval, but I mean, 
that's their only option. You can take that or go out and find your own. Right. And, and I, don't, I don't think, and I'm not going to speak for everyone, I'm going to speak for me. But <laughs> no one questions the process. And actually, we've always had with that process in place. No one's ever come back to us and said, you know, is it okay? Because that's part of what we need to do to operate the school a district on a regular basis. And the school committee wouldn't typically get involved in something like that because that's the the, the day to day functioning okay. of the school district. Um, I just you know, it, it, and I'm, I'm a little more concerned about that dollar limit idea. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to say uh, we're all okay with the energy stuff or whatever, but if you apply a blanket dollar limit, I think then that has the potential mm -hmm. to be more of an unknown. I wouldn't be comfortable with that. So I think what what I'm hearing is that. You've had implied authority to do this type of negotiation in the past, and that maybe there's not a need currently to delegate authority because it's implicit in your role. I guess the only guidance I would suggest here is that if the annual cost for something like this is within the budget parameters, right? I, I, I think we are giving you authority to spend within the budget. If it falls outside of that, mm -hmm. then I think it is appropriate to bring it back here, right? Because that would be spending outside of what we approved or gave authority for. Is that kind of that that, uh, that makes sense if if the energy costs are going down or if they're under budget? But again, if you have to make a call right then, sorry. Um, then do we want to miss the opportunity, even if it's an increased cost, do we, do we want to miss the opportunity for the lowest increased cost? I guess my, sorry, but my only, my only response to that is we, we may be making choices then of what to underfund, right? That's what, yeah. that, that would be, that's, it's within parameters, but Cliff? <laughs> I'm Would you like to, to say something? Well, perhaps. <laughs> okay. I, I agree with you, Tom. I, I, I just want to echo. He said it better than I would have. But I agree with Tom that um, when we approve a budget, we approve line items and amounts of money. And you have the authority to work within that. It's only if there were something exceptionally outside of that, those parameters would we need to be involved in that. After all, we hired you to manage the business. I appreciate that. It's just helpful to, I thought it would be, since I've been here a few months, and the first one, the oil, was a little bit more, um, there really was no wiggle room. You had to participate and kind of adhere to it. This one, there was probably a little bit more flexibility, but we had an opportunity to get, it, get an attractive rate, and we did. So I just wanted to try to get a sense of um, where you stood. And if I was not comfortable with something, I'd bring it to the group anyways, even if it was under my authority to do so, or if it's applied or explicit. Um, OK. So that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. And reduce call and take advantage of an opportunity. So that's good. Okay, um, the next would be Karen Molnar, who is not here. Did you have anything? Just, I just wanted to, I'll just, basically her topics of the coordinating program review. She's in full swing um, with the coordinating program review. She's finding it very, um, very challenging because um, she had estimated about 150 hours to complete this task. She's gonna be well over 450 hours to do this task because she has to do it for three separate districts. And this is one of those pieces where if you want to quantify, this is something that is extremely, extremely overwhelming um, to do three times. So um, that's what she anticipates will happen. And then um, she basically just wanted to inform you of the legislation that passed uh, House Bill 4056 um, that requires um, 
public schools to engage in substance use prevention education. So uh, school nurses and counselors are actually going to be conducting um, some screenings, verbal substance screenings to students, and that is part of the regulations um, of Chapter 52. So um, if you have any questions, further questions on any of this um, in legislation or on any further review, I um, invite you to just email Karen and ask her. Um, all is with there an added cost to the school that was outside of the budget to be conducting this? It's being not at this time. Okay. Not at this time. And then, uh, how um, how often would do we have a a coordinated pr program review? So the coordinated program review is every six years, and then you have an interim review um, every three years. So they'll do, now this will happen, we'll get the results, and then they have three years to fix any of the findings, and then they come in and do what they call a mid-cycle review. And then they'll go through that, and then they'll have it again in the middle of three years thereafter. And is the time she's putting into this that she's actually conducting the review? She's or putting, putting all the documents together. But there's an external and then they'll come in, they look at everything, okay. and they'll come in and they'll be here for about a week and go through files and um, they go through student files, they go through um, our own process, and then there's also part of the coordinated program review is not just special education, it's our ELL population, and it's also the Office of Civil Rights. So Cheryl, um, my assistant, has also been helping, and then Michelle, Karen's assistant, has also been helping and trying to get everything in folders for three separate folders. And Cheryl, if you ever, if you come into our office, you'll see this, like these wool carts she has under the desk. Those are all filled with the files of paperwork that we've had to put together just for the, just for the civil rights section of the review. So that 450 hours is Karen's hours. That's not everybody else's hours. And who is they that comes in and conducts? The Department of um, Education comes in um, with the Special Education Bureau. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long schools have had to do the coordinated program review? Like, what I'm trying to also track through the whole process is changes that have been made to Massachusetts schools, particularly since Ed Reform in 93, or in the last 20, 30 years? Is this like from 1960, or is this like a more recent? Oh boy, I'm I mean, testing my old special education brain. Um, I don't remember how long, but it has been at least 20 years that they've had to go through a process, and that has evolved over time. I can remember it 20 years ago when I was in special education and, and how we had to have things prepared, but you know, you can have a perfect finding and six years later have all these things show up because changes happen and you're expected to keep up with the changes and you could have missed one little word to something and you get a finding because you didn't have a word on um, um, so it, it, there's and there's been so many changes that have happened over the last five years that um, I think we've done a great job in trying to keep up with them but even as we're looking at the things and the paperwork to put together all of us like, oh, we have to put that in there or that one word that we didn't put in this policy, we didn't look at this policy. And they look at our policies as well as special education implementation. We have to, Karen just came up to me last week and she was in a little bit of a, of a panic because she had spent three days on one standard. And special education alone is 59 standards. And I remember that because of all the times that I had to do them myself as a SPED director. And special education law is 59 standards, and she spent three days on one standard with the ELL um, section. And she came up to me and she said, Mimi, I've worked on this for three days, and I just looked at this bottom, and we have to do a program evaluation internally. I have to have a committee together, and we have to do an evaluation on our ESL. And so she was going through, and I just said, we'll figure it out, we'll find a way to make it work. But she was panicking because does that mean she's going to have three separate committees to do three separate program evals instead of one? Because if that's the case, 
there's probably 45 to 50 hours that goes into one program about that she wasn't aware of that she was going to have to do. So we're trying to find a way of building a committee. I spoke to the principals this morning, this afternoon about it. We're going to try to build a committee that includes all three districts so we can just submit it as three, you know, one, but submit it three times because otherwise we can't get it done. Because that, that one evaluation, that's not just my time, that's everybody's time that's on the committee, about 50 hours. That's something to think about in the mm -hmm. regionalization discussion. Right. Yeah. Well, we didn't really save any time by Karen not being here. <laughs> okay. Um, Carol. You have a copy of my report, um, but I wanted to just highlight a few pieces in here. One is the professional development that we had in January. Um, we've been really broadening uh, the PD opportunities for the staff, bringing in topics around um, anxiety in the classroom, social media, civics, global studies. Um, in STEM, we were able to have Technicopia come in. We start thinking to work with our elementary teachers as they, as they change um, the science standards as they're working with the new science standards. Um, we do have a PD day, March 15th, um, <laughs> despite what <laughs> we say. Yeah. It it's the early release day, and even during that time, um, we're touching on areas of, there's a middle school leadership team for PBIS training. Um, we have uh, Nadine and Karen are doing something on making uh, student learning visible through the Harvard School of Education. There's growth mindset workshop, Sally and uh, Diane are teaching, um, and we have also continuing our science curriculum work. So PD Day is packed with all kinds of opportunities for teachers to grow and expand their own teaching and learning um, experiences. I also wanted to mention, along with that, we have um, our partnerships, and especially tell you about the, um, with Becker College coming up on Saturday, uh, March 25th, we have our first Girl Hackathon, and we have about 16 girls who have signed up from grades five, six, and seven, which is a nice start to this program. Good, good, small launch for us, but we're excited, and um, so we'll be planning that. It runs from uh, 10 to 12 on Saturday morning. We have high school girl mentors um, who are coming to work with the students as well, and volunteers from Tahanto PTO, they've been wonderful in helping us, supporting us in so many ways, so I'm grateful to, to their, for their help. Um, we also have partnerships with Tower Hill Botanic Garden. Um, Alice Puccio, who's the new uh, education coordinator, has been working with the teachers, especially the middle high school teachers. There are a number of them already um, involved with Alice and Tower Hill, bringing their students there, and we're working on an after, after school workshop for the teachers and eventually for the teachers and students to take together. So. So that's been exciting. I think that's pretty much it. I have some plans coming into you toward the end of the year, and we have some grants in motion. Um, so we're busy. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Carol. Paul? Good evening. Um, again, you have my report in front of you, um, and I also want to um, point out a few highlights. Um, first being where um, most of the way through the first year of our three-year uh, tech plan. So I just wanted to give you some updates. Um, first of all, um, Carol has been working with um, just about everybody to work on the digital literacy and computer science standards. Um, this is a big change from um, what had previously been the technology standards. Um, so. It's taken a lot of work to kind of unpack and look at what they are and where we're going to do them and how we're going to cover this. It's a huge job. We've got it started, and again, I think we've had a lot of people involved, so we're heading in the right direction. Um, second, um, our digital learning initiative has been kind of a focus this year. Um, again, in the plan, uh, AKA also known as the one-to-one -one plan. Um, again, we've done a lot, and again, we appreciate um, the donations we've gotten from um, the community as well that are helping us reach that goal maybe a little bit faster than, than we had hoped. And we had hoped by the end of the three-year plan that would be there and we're still kind of on track for that. We know with budget um, it's not very easy to do that so um, any help we can get um, is appreciated. Um, another big area of um, 
that we've been doing a lot of work is with inventory and budget. Um, at this point, um, we've had uh, a, a good running inventory for about three years, and so we can start. We could start looking back at um, how how things were lasting, and we can, so we can start putting a better plan together in terms of um, expected life for various equipment. Um, our next steps will be to kind of propose what that looks like for each of the districts um, over the next three years, as well as, as I said in the report, things that might be considered capital um, items versus just normal budgetary items. Um, the other big area in the tech plan that we've, uh, I think, addressed very well is the communication area. We have our updated website. Um, Technology Committee, along with the uh, uh, leadership team, is working on a social media plan. Um, hopefully, that's going to be done by the end of March. So, uh, at some point, that'll be presented to the superintendent. Um, again, our, our goal is to have it done at the end of our next Technology Committee meeting. Um, and then I also put in uh, just a quick update on the uh, a grant that um, we've been named finalists for. It used to be called, well, it is still called the Digital Partnership Grant. When Carol and I applied for it um, a little over two years ago, it was a grant to kind of help us get to a more one-to-one -one environment. And the idea was the state was going to kind of provide maybe some help with um, getting us there as well as some of the infrastructure to then support the one-to-one. -one. Um, in the meantime, the state has kind of changed <laughs> what that grant is for. They've kind of really made it a wireless grant. Um, so we were named finalists each of the three districts, because we did have to apply three times because we're three districts, uh, hint, hint. Um, and um, we had walkthroughs in each of the building um, in January. Um, only one of the four companies that did walkthroughs um, submitted a proposal to Mass uh, Department of Ed, and so we're kind of in that whole pattern right now. The Department of Ed is figuring out what the number of proposals they'll be able to fund and to what level. Um, I should know more probably within the next two to three weeks because they, they hope to make their decision final by the end of March. So um, hopefully at the next try meeting, um, I'll be able to at least have some kind of it's up as to whether we were approved for all, partial, which districts, maybe all districts. Um, I wouldn't say, the last time I said it looked good for a grant, uh, all of a sudden they figured we weren't West Boylston and we were like not part of a Neshoba district and something that blew up, so I'm not going to say anything about whether we're, I feel good or bad about this one. Um, but I do actually think that we have a good chance to get some money. Great. John? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I will be brief. You've got my report in front of you. Mrs. Clisham talked about all the wonderful things that are happening in my school, and Mrs. Exram already talked about student growth um, in terms of student population numbers. So the, I, guess, I think the only two things that I will add is a repeat of, please feel free to come to literacy, family literacy night on Thursday. Ice cream in March, you can't beat it. Um, and just a real quick note that we had our annual March cookout today. Um, so if you could smell hamburgers cooking outdoors, that was me. Um, and we had a good time. So good things are well in Berlin. <laughs> I will say you'll notice in all of the principal um, reports, um, I did ask that they give an update of the enrollment in the individual buildings. As we've been redefining job descriptions this year as one of our strategic plan actions, we came across where it talked about monthly updates of their building enrollment. And I said, this would be a great piece to add for the school committee so they can see not just when it's school attending or in October and then at the end of the year, but monthly to see how is our building running through enrollment. Anyway. So we'll see that in relation to Thank you, John. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be brief as well because everybody stole my thunder. <laughs> yeah, right. um, I, I would like to just piggyback on Paul's. Uh, we're very fortunate to have gone one-to-one -one in fourth grade this past month. 
uh, in large part to BEF grant. They've, you know, they've been fantastic. They were able to purchase um, another Chromebook cart and the Chromebooks that went along with it, along with repurposing some of the laptops that we have in there. Um, fourth grade's now one to one. We're really looking forward to the help from the PTO to, to keep that process moving down. Um, takes a village, and we're fortunate we have a really great village to educate, a kid, educate our kids. Um, the one other thing I wanted to update is we have seen an uptick in kindergarten registration. We are up to 30 now, which is, yes, we're up to 30. We're in no competition. I gotta go find some more kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't take them for mine, okay? <laughs> Uh, and then I wanted to update upcoming events just because with the impending snowstorm, we were supposed to have fourth grade invention convention tomorrow. We have pushed that out to the following Tuesday, the 21st. Uh, if you've never come for it, I encourage you. It's, it's a lot of fun, the fourth graders. They make their inventions and they make their sales pitch and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and the one other thing is that um, I wanted to thank the PTO because on Friday we're gonna have um, They've been great and they've invited the Kindness Ninja to come join us and it, it kind of piggybacks nicely on our February month of kindness. Uh, so that should be a, a great evening. I want to thank the PTO for, for arranging that. What's the Kindness Ninja? So... Do you to expand on that? Or? Yeah, so it's this gentleman and actually it's a group and I believe it's based out of California. They come and they talk to the kids about kindness and you know every kindness matters. You know we spent the month of February talking to kids about you know, not just reading, not just math, but it's important that you're a kind person. That you're going to sit with the lonely kid in the cafeteria, or you're going to invite the kid on the buddy bench to play. Um, you know it was a real kind of eye-opening moment for for the school, and you know we really changed our focus in a lot of ways. Um, it's funny, you see a lot more smiles just because you're talking about kindness. So this gentleman comes and, uh, and he does all kinds of karate and <laughs> ninja kind of things uh, and, and talks about kindness. Because you've got to make kindness kind of exciting. <laughs> and there's nothing cooler than ninjas, except pirates. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they didn't have a kind pirate, so. That's cool. Good stuff. Diane? I think I'm going to put a buddy bench in my office. <laughs> I need a buddy bench. I like it. Uh, is it an actual bench? Yeah. yeah. You guys don't have a buddy a bench? Idea. No, we don't have a buddy bench. Oh. Well, come over. I'll show you mine. Nor do we have ninjas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> then you're really missing the boat. I know. That's great, though. We have frequent flyers. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they call it the buddy bench. <laughs> Um, so in my report, um, as Nadine stated, we have the updated enrollment. Since October 1st um, through March 6th when this report was done, um, we have a decrease in one student at Tahanto. So we went from 621 to 620. Now these numbers also include um, out-of-district placements that we're still responsible for, and they also include pre-K, um, since pre-K um, is housed here at um, at Tahanto. So we're holding steady around 620. Thank you, Betty. Okay, so we move to business items. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to begin? Well, I would um, I'm not exactly sure what, are we supposed to just take a note on this and we it? Privately, or how do we do this? Well, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions um, about it. What I can tell you is uh, we had Alice, who was a visitor from Shanghai, who mm -hmm. is the commissioner of the Young Fu Educational Bureau um, that we're partners with, um, sister, our sister schools. And um, they asked if it was possible to do as part of our agreement that we have is from time to time we can potentially have some exchange opportunities. So she had asked us how quickly we could do something like this and, and how we could make it work. Um, so John, Ace, Diane, and myself, the four of us sat together and we formulated a letter that's in your packet um, of how we felt the parameters would, would fit our school system. And um, so that's what we did. And, and they would like to see if it's a possibility of hosting parents um, have our school parent, our, our own parents be the hosting families for these students 
Um, so I also sent out an information, sent out our letter to Russ to pray, and I also asked him, you know, other schools do exchanges. I'm not familiar with how it works, so I haven't done this under my privilege um, as a leader. I have been as a parent and have had um, exchange students living with me, but on a school side as an education as a leader, I haven't dealt with that before, so I don't know all the, um, the appropriate protocols. So he actually sent me packets of all different school systems, and there's one in particular, um, I want to say it might be, I think it might be Norwood, but I can't, don't quote me on that one, I might be wrong, um, but there was one in particular that I was, I felt met our expectation the most, so Cheryl and I, um, we're supposed to do it tomorrow, or the snow day, so we'll be doing it this week, is actually going over the actual letter protocol expectations, but it's also a guidebook, so if we have families here that are interested in being a host family, I have the guidebook that I would like to sit with those families or have the principal sit with the families and actually go over the guidelines um, of expectation of a, of a school um, as well. So, and then obviously once we revise it that meets our needs, I'll have the principals and Russ will work it over after Cheryl and I have done. Um, but we chose June for the elementary schools of this year for um, one of two reasons, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's after all of our testing is done. It's a great opportunity, it's a great time of the year. There's a lot of great excitement things happening in our schools in the month of June that we felt if they want to see a real cultural American experience of what it is like. Um, we are limiting it to grades four and five. Um, they had said, well, we could even have third graders, and I said, that's way too young. Even fourth grade to us as Americans, we feel it's young, but in the Chinese culture, they don't. Um, so we had stated for one week that they could um, um, host for fourth and fifth graders. Um, and then in October was the best time we felt at Tahanta because in, at Tahanta we have testing that goes all the way through into June, including June. So it just doesn't make sense to have them here at this time. Also in October is, I believe it's one of their Chinese holidays, isn't that what mm -hmm. Alice said? So they wouldn't really be missing much school <coughs> over there. And again, it would be for one week. Um, we want to try it for one week, see how it goes. And if it's a positive, you know, if it works as well as we think, then that's what we would do. We also know that right now is March, and we wanted to do it in June because if it's a short timeline, we might get a smaller group of students, in which case then we're kind of breaking ourselves in of having exchange opportunities. Um, they had st stated 20 students in, in each classroom. I said, no, how about 20 students for the elementary level as a whole that we can equally disperse between the two schools based on the grades and, and so forth. So um, that's where we are at this point, and I just would like um, the school committee to vote to approve so we can get the letter out to them knowing that we're doing a lot of background work um, this week and next week on the actual document should parents come forward to say that they're interested in potentially hosting a student. It also gives us time to, to see how many host families that we have and, and families that would be interested in doing that as well. So are we voting to approve what exactly are we voting to approve? Right, good question. Um, I guess I, I would ask that you are voting um, to approve our proposed letter to be sent to um, the Young Blue Educational Bureau. Okay, thank you. Do you want to have a motion from the Berlin Committee member? I'll make a motion to approve the letter. I second it. Do um, you have any questions or concerns? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Larry, would you like to? So, um, we also have the same letter. Uh, so, do we have a motion to approve on behalf of the Boston School Committee? I make that motion to uh, approve the letter. Okay, I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And could I have a motion to approve the letter for the Berlin Boston Regional School Committee? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Great. So I'm going to actually pass around this. These are the meeting minutes that Lori and Angela need to sign. And then also for my administrative team, there's the uh, letter that I'll need your signatures on that letter so we can get that out. Okay. So we have one remaining Boylston School Committee uh, business item, as we added earlier. Yes. Uh, we need to approve the the email that was sent uh, to the Boylston was electman for their request. It relates uh, to uh, to potential for um, added incoming students from the the proposed new housing in Wolf Wilson. And um, mm -hmm. and um, so we, we, we just want to have the school committee approve that. Do I hear a motion? So I move to approve the letter that was sent to, or will be sent to the select. And I'll second. Any questions? No. Okay. All of you? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So we have a couple of additional business items under the Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee. The first one is the topic of advertising in the school. Do you want to describe that again? Um, sure, and actually Larry and Tom, feel free to uh, type in as, as well as uh, Diane. Uh, we were given um, a request to allow for um, an athletic field sign sponsorship or an application um, for basically to have banners um, hanging outside by the fields and by the fencing. And um, we brought it forward to the policy subcommittee, which are Larry and Tom, and they wanted to bring it forward to the full committee for full discussion with some of the concerns. Um, it does violate the current policy of the public solicitations in the schools, policy KHA, and um, the advertising in the schools, um, policy KHB. So um, they wanted to bring it forward. It's a great concept. It's a great idea. The question became are we opening up Pandora's box because then how do you do we have we don't have any if we decide to do something like this we don't have any regulations in place currently about what type of businesses um, would be allowed to have the banners and we want to think about what kind of businesses we'd want to be promoting around the fields of the school grounds so there's a positive and negative, just like anything, and I think they just wanted to have a more open conversation with everybody on the committee about, does this make sense? And then just with two underscore, if we were to approve this, we would, uh, prior to that, have to have to change with those with two policies as what they current, currently prohibit all you know, advertising and was solicitation in the the schools. These policies, in part, uh, came into play a few years back when we opened up the new building, and when there was requests to name certain areas or rooms or whatever, um, and it, it's it's always been the the case of, well, do we want to open that door? Understanding that we can't open it just a little bit in all cases. And two, we would have to define what type of advertising or solicitation is acceptable and what it isn't, which is, again, a fairly substantial undertaking. And there are reasons that we end up with these policies in place. It's just just kind of keep the door closed and you don't have to deal with all the all that other stuff. So we kind of felt that that's something that we understand the 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 benefit of the proposal. And so it was not so much that we have an issue with the proposal per se. It's more to just do we want to 
as a committee be opening that door. And the, did the boost, and this would, the fundraising proceeds from this would go to the athletic booster group? Mm -hmm. That was the specific request in front of us. Okay, so they brought this request That's forward. That's correct. correct. It, do they have any sense of how much this might raise? I was just curious. Yeah, we did some quick, yeah. honestly, in my opinion, it's very small dollars, right? It's for one sign, it's 200 for the first year, 100 each after. And so what, do you, what can you maybe get there, seven, eight, you know, in, in the outfield? Um, so generally small, I, my opinion is it's really small money for what we're opening up. Um, so I, you probably can tell I, I would be against this. Mm -hmm. I think it, it requires a, a level of oversight that I don't think we're prepared to do, at least now, and a lot of effort would have to go into making it happen for more advertising. Right? I think, if anything, my opinion is I'd rather do a lot less advertising um, at the school to have in front of our kids all the time. I just think that this is a slippery slope we'd be going down with this. But with that said, we felt that there may be others that feel differently on this that we wanted to bring it here because it, it does open more than just coming to the policy subcommittee to asking about this specific thing. Mm -hmm. And would, would to be a uh, just I did that twice tonight. I'm sorry. Um, you know, everything in what, what, what Tom said, we're on with the USA page with this. But we didn't feel that we should speak for the whole committee. Thank you. Thank you. My question is have we had any kind of legal in your opinion on this? No, we didn't bring it to the attorneys this time. We're just I don't think we're really, I don't know, I don't think to do it, really. We just said, they were both against it, but they, they really, before they made an actual decision, they wanted anybody to kind of mm -hmm. talk well, about it to see if there's a different side that they weren't thinking about, or? I'm glad you're both against it, because I do not want to change this policy. I don't like the thought of having advertising on the fences. I think we live in a beautiful school in a beautiful wooded setting, and I just have a personal feeling against it. I don't want to change the policy to try and benefit fundraising. I feel the pain of the groups that are short on funds and need funds, but I, I don't want to change the policy. See, I don't really share those feelings, uh, but I don't have a hugely strong feeling in favor. I. I think it's very common. I think Little Leagues, you go to Little League fields and the sponsors are, you know, state reps and people, you know, who want to support the community. I don't think, I, I've never been offended to go to a ball field and see, you know, various banners for various things. I've never seen anything offensive as far as who the advertisers were or the content is. I would think that if the Booster Club was responsible for the solicitation, that we could require that they develop a, some restrictions around certain things you may not want on those fences. But I, I personally don't find it visually concerning. I do question, you know, the amount of effort for whatever they're going to raise. Is it really going to be worth? I, I don't see it as opening us up for other kinds of, I mean, people can ask, but I don't think this has to mean, oh, now we have to let anybody that wants to do advertising in the school do it. Um, I would think it could be restricted to this particular purpose. I think that um, one of the other concerns that I had when this first got brought to me is I spoke to Peter, Maggie is the athletic director, and I said, okay, so we move, this, we move the fences. The fencing doesn't stay in the same location. We have to move our fence for different sports, for different things, go from this side of the field to those. Things. So who moves those signs, and who's responsible for that signage and the storing and then the replacement of the signage? That's a lot of extra additional responsibility too. So that was something, and 
that he said, you know, I guess we have to work it out, we have to figure that out, but that is something additional for our custodians would have to be responsible for that, and they have to, or they can't move the fence until the sign comes down because somebody else is responsible. And then we need it down for the games, or? Yeah, and another issue. Storage issues. area, too. Pizza cars have grown and flew all over the place. They're not in the school grounds, they're on the public grounds. And they flew all over. I had to personally retrieve them when they went all over. They was, we need a storage you know, I had brought up the idea that, you know, if the booster club were really hurting her, her and they are, mm -hmm. they, they've had such great success with our sports teams, and they right. and they help out the sports teams very nicely, um, and giving the awards and so forth for the sports teams, but right now, unfortunately, their funds are low at the, with the booster club. So, you know, one of the things I think Larry and Tom, the three of us, had talked about is, there's other ways of doing the advertising too, and you know, would would buying a brick be something that um, is against the policy? I don't know where they could, you know, purchase a brick, or you know, are there are there other ways of getting bigger gains for your dollars with the amount of work that's being required to to go into the policy? So, did they know the policy was going to be discussed here today? Or? Yeah. Okay. I think that, you know, I think with the Booster Club, as Nadine had said, um, you know, they, you talk about, you know, the sort of the, the bang for the buck, how much money you're really going to get. Um, but I, I can attest to even the Booster Club doing the raffle with the Bruins tickets and the Celtics tickets. It was, everybody had to do work. And they, they the donation. And the donation, sorry. The donation, um, and they, um, you know, it was work from administratively to the athletes. There was a lot of time and manpower put in for a small amount of money. But even that small amount of money, they were at the point where they they did not have any funds to buy juniors their sweatshirts for this year's um, sports awards, and to get. You know, because we are so small, we're asking the same parent population for, you know, for money. So I think what they were looking for was to, um, you know, advertisement for local businesses. Um, you know, but I do see, you know, the answers to the questions. Uh, you know, an idea may be those schools that currently do that. I know in, in the town that I live in, um, Nipmuc, Menden Upton, um, they just began doing it this year. Um, you know, so possibly reaching out to them and, and see what their policy is and, you know, what are the pros and cons, what have they run into. Do you have a strong feeling yourself about the idea? <sighs> to be honest, not really. Um, I think the question of, you know, what do we want to advertise does come up I, and I would you know suggest we just as, as we do here you know we can't promote anything that you know talks about drugs alcohol violence or anything you know any business that may you know support that but having you know a banner up for um, you know the Boylston House of Pizza or um, you know the Boylston Deli or um, a company in Berlin Clinton Savings Bank Mm -hmm. You know, there is another way to look at it too, in the sense of uh, partnership. You know, it's mm -hmm. an opportunity for local businesses to be a part of the school in maybe a different mm -hmm. way than they. I mean, normally. right? I mean, we do. I mean, we solicit advertising for our yearbooks, yearbook pages mm -hmm. from local businesses. I think, though, that there's a difference with advertising in a very public space, like a sports field. And quite frankly, you get into First Amendment rights. I mean, I don't think I would want to be the one who told a company, a business, no, we can't put your sign up because your content or your business is a problem. Um, quite frankly, I think we would be um, putting ourselves in jeopardy um, and it is the First Amendment right to advertise, so... I don't think we have to 
I think as long as there are restrictions that are set out ahead of time, Diane just articulated them. I don't see that as... I'm not sure that those restrictions would hold up should someone make a case. I don't think we're... Well, it's... I don't think we're in the business of censorship. And I think the court would tell us that. Yeah, I guess that's a legal question. Well, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't pretend to. You're not? No. <laughs> but I do have concerns. I think after spending, um, perhaps because I spent 38 years in public schools, I became uh, aware of a lot of things that I didn't think were legal issues, which actually were legal issues. I guess everything is uh, So perhaps I'm having a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Um, I really liked what Tom had to say about when you look at the, the value, uh, financial value that would be received from this and weigh it against um, some of the problems that might be encountered. I'm not sure it's, a, it's the right thing to do. Also on the, you know, the sample they gave of the um, application for this, you know, they also said, as a fan, we will create a sign cheering on your athlete or sport. And I guess that didn't really sit well with me either, because I just wouldn't like to envision that some students have a sign. I mean, maybe it would just be the team go varsity soccer or whatever, you know, but it just, it scared me to think about we might be cheering on individual students in the banner. I didn't care for that. But one sport for this is another sport when, you know, the fence is used for all the sports that, you know, move sports and would be advertising just for one versus the other. You know, you could send a message to. Mm -hmm. So, one thing we might there's a couple of options. One is there seems to be a preponderance of feeling in one direction in the group. So I, we may just be at a point where we'd like to take a vote on it. An option is if you don't feel strongly or don't want to take the vote tonight is whether we want to explore A, talk with other schools that have done it and get some pros and cons. B, I think it would be helpful for us to think about do we have other options or suggestions that we might want to make to the Booster Club as far as helping them with their dilemma around fundraising. I would be more than happy to sit with the Booster Club plan and give them some suggestions on some different potential fundraising ideas strategize with them about what they already had obstacles with or they've already tried or I can mm -hmm. help them with that. Um, which I just remember there too, just with the dollars that you mentioned, I think that was a lot less than I thought would, would, would be on the table, but um, we should think about there being a, a line too on if, if, if you did decide to go forward with this, that we're not necessarily going to use any school resources to do this. It's funds if somebody else is going to be raising them, that they'll be responsible for it. Um, whatever. And those, those banners, they, they're talking about getting at that $100 revenue and they cost more than $100. So we necessarily want to take more responsibility ourselves for, you know, if they're worn by weather or something like that. So um, that is just something to keep in mind as well. That is a, a valid point. I was thinking of about it when we were talking to Suzanne. That I've seen that happen. That you know somebody's paying a relatively small amount of money for that banner to be up over a long period of time, and they do start to get crappy. And you, somebody's got to maintain that. Somebody's got to pull it down. And I don't think it should be our custodian. So I guess my suggestion on this would be that we forego. Um, this option, and we encourage them to seek other alternatives for fundraising. Mm -hmm. That'd be my. Do we need to take a formal vote? Please? You don't need a formal vote. It was really just a discussion, yeah. and and it was a recommendation of the public subcommittee to begin with. But it's been confirmed here as a consensus. You don't need to vote on it. We can just Diane can 
let the booster club mm -hmm. know that yep. this is what the discussion was. I think we'd like to make a gesture of help too. You know, sure. To yeah. Help them. I can certainly relay that. Okay. Is it yep. Sue? Sue Tolls. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. So I'm not going to go through and, and read all of this, but I did give you some updates of all of my, um, all of the action steps you'll see in blue is, is my comment of what I've done for each one. Um, it's nine pages long, so I don't think you can sit here and read them. Um, but I would ask you if you had any specific questions or area that you felt you needed more information on. Um, next. Did you not see that? No, my computer died. Oh, your computer died. I'm sharing. 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 If it's blacked out, you don't have to answer that section. <laughs> we had a little trouble with that. I know. So I'll black it out instead of shading it. I'll make it all black so you don't have to answer that section um, and evaluate on that section. But you will see again for each action step, I've highlighted which standard um, element and indicator that particular stamp, that particular action step aligned with on the evaluation report and protocol. But um, I believe that um, we had stated that in April is when you would probably have to um, report out on my evaluation um, because May, I think, is after the elections. And despite my best efforts, those will be coming back in April. They actually, yeah, well, actually, I think what's happened, Angela, you did it last year, right? I think everything went to Cheryl, right? And then she just gave them to you, or everything went to you, and then you gave everything to Cheryl after? Yeah, so every, went, everything went to me, and I sent Cheryl also copies of everybody's individual. Right. So she got a copy of everyone's individual, and then I consolidated it on one, um, one thing, and then she also got a copy of the one, the one okay. combined document. So I'll send all of that out to you um, this week so that you have it. So if you have any questions or anything, I think our next meeting is, is it April 4th? Yeah. I think is our next meeting, so that's coming up soon. So you'll need to probably let the week before. Yeah. That would be good. Well, is, you should, should you just, I, can I make a quick suggestion? Yeah. I think that if we use, get your, our evaluations into you at whatever date you say in April, you can still consolidate it then, and then you can do your presentation to the school committee in May. Oh, that's a good It's idea. just we need to get all our evaluations in before the election. So yeah. last year we got them in at the end of April. I think we're like the third week of April. Yeah. Great suggestion. Yeah. Good. Thank you. So all of a sudden I'm thinking and I'm doing the time. I'm like, wait, tomorrow is... Oh, wait, I'll have to send them out tomorrow. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments about any anything for. Well, you and I had a chance to talk a little bit informally before the meeting, just commenting a little bit on the social and emotional learning, which is kind of a tough area to... I think for every school to implement meaningful strategies is challenging, and I see efforts to do that too. And I applaud those efforts. I think there are some things that, um, which I, I actually had only read the first one and said, well, is that, and Nadine even commented on it in her mid cycle that it's, you know, is this really something that's having broad impact? That, the particular item that we were talking about. What we were talking about was the, um, because the, our, my goal is the same as the administrative team, pretty much, um, what we were talking about was the social emotional and how are we really measuring that impact that we're having. Um, and I basically, the way I explained it was, um, first of all, we don't really have an outline framework at this time so that we know how we're actually measuring some of that as a, as a real solid. And right now, we're in the process of, we've gone down to two curriculums for, we want richer social-emotional curriculum. 
and it takes time to build that framework to actually understand what we want. And so this year we had to really try to formulate what we wanted. Um, and we're down to two options for the um, K-8. to It's the high school that I've asked Diane and Carol um, to really work more and to pull more staff from Tejanto to look at some of the high school curriculum that's out there. And it's beyond the PBIS. We already do PBIS, but we want it richer. And rather than just saying, yes, we did it, and let's check it off, we wanted to really make sure our foundational understanding and that we're already in the page of what we want to do before we actually implement something. So, you know, the saying garbage in, garbage out, we didn't want to just throw it in there and then it's just a little bit of something, but that it actually has meaning and it is in alignment with what our vision is and what we've been doing so far. We don't want to eliminate the PBIS, we want to enrich the PBIS with some of the curriculum that we've put together. So that's what we were talking about. And that's a lot of the work that we've been doing. Was there also, were there any general recommendations through NEASC around social media? We have not received the report yet. Oh, we're just still waiting for the report. Which is really, I have to say, is, is I said to her, I, I, when I text you or email you and say, hey, by the way, so we haven't gotten it. And I said, you know, what's really um, sad about that is a lot of the information that's in the NEASC report was submitted three years ago just about, some of it was two years ago, um, three years ago, so a lot has changed um, since that. So even those findings, a lot of them are gonna be, I think, even outdated, um, whether they're positive or negative, they're just gonna be an outdated assessment. I think. Yeah, but I was hoping that we would have it by now because it, it um, should help drive, partially drive the school improvement plan. Mm -hmm. So, it's yeah. five months. It's mm -hmm. been five months, right? It was a Halloween. Yeah. Right yeah right Is that typical? No. Uh, it takes long to get no. extra. So. Yeah. Right. I need new adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> it's an A plus 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 plus. So that that was one of the pieces that Lori and I had talked about anyway. That. Um, some of our action steps, you know, it, it's so hard to do these in October when we hadn't had any foundation. I mean, in August, we didn't really have a lot of the foundation, but we've been working on that a lot as an administrative team, even in our admin meetings, about having discussions. Um, what does this work? We've all done a training, or will be doing a training um, throughout the year on social emotional. So everybody knows we're aware of it. We've asked all the teachers to have some reflection of um, whether it's an action step within a goal or an actual goal and how to address social emotional learning in the classroom. So we did a lot of that foundational pieces and now it's just collecting our data this year to know what are we gonna do for next year. And that'll be some of the planning that Carol and I um, kind of talked about a little bit last week um, that we're gonna be looking at over the summer and what we need to do. So future agenda items, I have a few. Okay. That I, wanna, I have two that I want to bring up for future discussion, and I have one that I just want to give people a very, very brief update on the regionalization of subcommittee planning area. Um, but for future agenda items, I would really appreciate some education and discussion around the changes in education on the national level in what I consider an assault on public education. Um, and I think it would be helpful to learn a bit about where are we and what's, what's the future um, down the road. The second thing is, I know that we're in a different kind of community, but I'm here because I work in Worcester, I'm hearing a lot of things from the schools about the immigration issue and students being actually being afraid to come to school because they're afraid something will happen to their parents while they're at school. Obviously, the, the level of impact is much greater in a community like Worcester, but I was just curious if you're seeing students, and also students who might be LGBT, who feel very threatened or anxiety, written about changes that are happening. So maybe for future discussion, we could 
just make sure that, you know, I'd be interested in learning what's, what's happening in the school and are there things we should be doing more of to support um, people who may be impacted. Um, the Regionalization Subcommittee had our first meeting. I think we felt that it was pretty productive. It was myself, Angela, and Matt, with Nadine and Karen Molnar, and Bob, mm -hmm. who were present. Um, mm -hmm. Bob was not present. Oh, Bob was not <laughs> present. <laughs> but your presence was yeah, there. Yeah. 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 You were there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> what meeting was that, Lori? <laughs> okay. Um, but the group sort of laid out, in general, an approach. We actually laid out sort of an end point being the um, May meeting next year, the um, town meeting next year for our goal um, as far as bringing to town meeting for approval an amendment to our current regional agreement. We talked about development of a charter and some philosophical points about how we're going to do that. We actually set a, a timeline. We have another meeting on March 30th, so we'll be looking at a draft charter at that meeting. Angela has agreed to do some work on the timeline portion of that. We also talked about wanting to revisit um, really all of the documents that have been work that we've done to date and kind of refresh that information for us and in particular looking at guidance and information that Steve Hemmen had shared with us a few years ago. Goes back a ways now. Um, but it was basically how to do a uh, uh, regional amendment. We also talked about potentially wanting to reach out um, to get information from others who have done this. And there are some local examples Angela shared. Um, we also talked about consulting with Russ around examples and potentially Stephen as well. Um, talked a lot about wanting to, once the charter is developed, um, is to start to look at some, what we wanted to refer to as listening forums, opportunities for us to share a little bit of information publicly, but elicit information, um, maybe first and foremost and utilize that information to potentially address concerns or to incorporate elements that should be part of our thinking around um, an amendment um, to regionalization. We also developed a rough outline of what we thought might be the composition of the regionalization uh, committee and had ideas we certainly want parents, teachers, um, planning board, fin finance committee, select boards, and the three members who are currently on from the school committee, um, as well as Nadine and Karen at the, uh, at the meeting. It did occur to us that rather than soliciting members now, it makes more sense to share some, have the charter together, share, and which we would bring, by the way, to the April 4th discussion and approval, um, but is to put that information together to be able to start sharing that information with potentially going, for example, to the selectmen, going to FinCon and doing a little presentation and then seeking volunteers who might be interested in serving, that it's easier to understand what am I signing up for. We also talked about wanting to have all of our meeting dates ahead of time so that we could give people an idea of this is what the, the schedule would look like, this would be the frequency. So, anything I missed? No, I think it was a very productive meeting. Um, I think you were able to start getting a framework and a direction of, of how to move forward. Um, I think that the subcommittee actually did a great process of thinking 
what's their timeline, and now they're going to be stepping back to say, what does it look like in three months, what does it look like in three, six months, what does it look like? And by setting up that framework of a timeline over the course of the next 14 months, I think it's going to be helpful. Yeah, I think it actually put a boundary around it that felt oddly enough felt freeing because it didn't feel like this was just going to keep dragging on forever. I know that sounded like a contradiction. I know. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it, it just feels better to have the end goal in mind time-wise so that it's not, um, you know, not something that people feel is dragging on unnecessarily. So I think at the next meeting, Deborah, if you're writing down future agenda items, next to regionalization update, it would also be um, submittal of um, charge letter to the committee. Charter. But I mean, I'm sorry, the charter. Yeah. I'm like, thinking you're already charged. Letter. <laughs> you're already charged. <laughs> charged to do the task. So the charter letter that they want to bring forward. Comments, questions? It does sound like a very productive meeting. Congratulations. Great. Okay. Are there any other future agenda items or school committee comments? I have uh, two comments. The first one is with Wednesday's PD day, if there's a delay of students, uh, we, we still have the PD day. I mean, how would that work? Because it's a half a day. No. If there's a school we delay, we cannot have no a two-hour delay. There would be no school. It's either all or nothing. And if there's no school, then there won't be a PD day. That's right. Okay. We'll have to figure that out for the future. And John's pretending like he's really sad about. That. <laughs> 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 I was. I was watching just, him kind of. I like that we've ball. thought it through. We we have an answer in advance. We just have to wait for the weather guy. Um, or girl. Yeah. Person. 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> or, bug. Uh, or the Sorry. weather bug. Oh. Or the weather bug. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the weather bug. My other comment is, um, to our knowledge, I don't think anyone's pulled papers for school committee for the Berlin School Committee. So I just want to say to the folks at home, if there's anyone interested, we'd love to have you on board. And you're always here. <laughs> okay, any other comments? All right, could we have a motion to adjourn the regional school committee? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. But do we have a motion to adjourn the Boston School Committee? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have a motion to adjourn the Berlin School Committee? So moved. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We just have a